Salmon is the author of the Necromancer Chronicles, available from Orbit Books, and Dreams of, Tr of Shreds and Tatters from Solaris. She lives in Austin, where she can often be found in absent bars, golf clubs, climbing gyms, and other liminal spaces. I am reading from a work in progress today. I'm in this ridiculous gothic pastiche mode right now, so the working title of this is Bat Book Candle, but it will grow a more serious title of it. <laughs> I stood alone on a desolate platform north of Vesh, still far from my destination. I hadn't yet crossed into the foothills of the, the Decathian, and the night air hung close and sultry. The moon was nearly full overhead, teething through a lace of clouds. That milky light gleamed against the rate of the train tracks, which vanished into darkness to the north and south. An unpaved road ran beside them for a while, then curved and also disappeared. A single lantern hung, hung from a hook on the platform, swaying languidly on a creaking chain. An engine had malfunctioned along the northbound line, delaying my departure from Vesh, which had in turn caused me to miss my connection at the next station. Rose Chapel was far from civilization. When I finally reached Dornau, I was promised a carriage would take me to the estate, but reaching Dornau at all was an ordeal in itself. The train would come at dawn, I was told, when I opted to wait, instead of traveling ahead in the wrong direction and backtracking the next day. In the heat and light of the afternoon, it had seemed the most practical option. After a day packed into a grimy, smoky train car, thick with other people's sweat, spending a few hours alone sounded a blessing. The night was of no concern. My sleep had been scant since I decided to leave Vesh. I had watched with envy as the other passengers in my car napped. Though the swaying rhythm of the coach recollected the so distant sensation of my mother's arms, rest eluded me. Now weariness dragged in all my limbs, and my eyelids were sticky as roofing felt. The thought of sleeping alone in the moonlight, however, comforted me not at all. Insects droned in the shadows, night birds chattered in the trees. Somewhere in the distance, a dog howled. After the nocturnal clamor of the city, the desolation chilled me despite the weather. The sky was so vast and wide above me. Drifting clouds revealed and concealed stars a hundred eyes blinking lazily. If I could have captured that effect on canvas, my career would have been assured, but I knew my hand could never recreate what my eye beheld now, nor invoke the feelings that moved in me. I'd been to sea as a child, and thought that wide water the emptiest, hungriest thing I would ever behold. But now, grown and on solid ground, I felt more lost and insignificant than I ever had. I fell into a daze staring up at the moon, and might have drifted into dreams, but the sound of hooves penetrated my few. I started and roused myself. My watch told me it was nearly midnight. A sudden fierce hope rose in me that it might be a postcoach or railroad diligence that might take me to some less forsaken place for the night, even if it meant a more complicated journey in the morning. As the horses drew closer, the moonlight gleamed on the sleek lines of the carriage, too rich and elegant to ever be used by public works. A private vehicle, in a hurry, no doubt, to be traveling so far from anything at this hour, and not likely to stop for a stranger. To my surprise, the horses slowed as they neared the platform. Handsome animals, to my untrained eye, black in the moonlight, but when they passed the swaying lantern, its light painted their flanks a rich auburn red. The driver was muffled against the wind, despite the heat. He glanced at me, but I couldn't see his face between his scarf and the brim of his hat. He drew up on the reins, leaning down to speak to a passenger. <coughs> I stood staring like a fool. I can only imagine my appearance. Rumpled shirt sleeves, sweat-stained linen. My luggage might attest to me being better than a transient or a wanderer, but there was little about me to suggest respectability. The carriage window opened, and a pale hand beckoned. A worm of misease crept through me as I approached. I wanted to run toward the slim hope of rescue, but at the same time, my feet grew leaden and loath to leave the ground. Shyness wasn't some, normally something that burdened me, but now my mouth went dry and my tongue felt numb and lifeless. The shutters opened wider and a white face leaned forward. The driver kindled his lantern. Only then I realized they'd been driving without a light. <laughs> 